Okay, this question involves city finances. That's important in any city. Uh, certainly with Hobson City, situ uh, Hobson city situation, it's, it's always been an issue here for the most part. Um, what should residents expect for the next four years in terms of finances? Is, or the, is the outlook good? Is it progressive for fin finances? I think as, uh, the outlook is good in the sense that, uh, but let me just say this, uh, the revenue that we get you know, from taxes and businesses, things of that nature, we know that we have one business in Hobson City, and that's Ross Handemark. Uh, people ask me all the time, why can't we get a Dollar Tree? But we can't get a Dollar Tree because we don't have the dollars to get a Dollar Tree. And when I say that, I'm not being nasty. But we have to consider the fact that we are in an economically deprived community. When you talk about putting stores or getting a franchise to come in, they're going to look at age, they're going to look at education, and they're going to look at income. Those things that we are lacking in this community. So we are being creative in the sense that we're working with uh, an alliance that we formed with other black cities called the Historical Black Towns and Settlements Alliance to develop a historical corridor that we hope will create some income in addition to other things that we have coming up. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, same question for you, please. One minute. valuable matter to take in consideration. When you are dealing with these creative programs in today's society, as, as a mayor's concern, I have as to however lives, I mean, however lives are lives as people among people, but all in such as in mind are factors as how uh, been stated to, uh, and in consideration factor, as I have so written, it takes quite a lot of, it takes quite a lot for a person to establish a mind factor and outside of the cage process of mind to encounter the cage factor of someone <coughs> else's. Mm. When taking one a role out of among the system of society as society, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We'll start with you if you'll stay up there for the next question. It'll be the first one. Okay. Uh, this question comes from our audience. Uh, it involves it, the uh, city's water systems, which, as you know, has been a point of contention for City Hall to deal with in, Latin, in the previous years. Uh, what could, if you're elected, what could you do to help improve the water system here in Hobson City? Maybe I should explain myself as to why I'm trying to get someone's state of mind. In that era in, in which I figure in a position as a leadership aspect to focus, factors should be uh, and mayor's means of importance. It's 80% it's of those elderly in the next age aspect that's in a mind frame. The government is one, the government is on a a uh, close related condition of a difference between the middle and physical. Mayor McCord, Linda, same question about the water system. We have been working diligently with uh, the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, uh, the Anderson Waterworks and Sewer Board, and USDA. Uh, we're in the process now of getting uh, an engineer to do a uh, speculation for us. And we have been doing ourselves some of the uh, repairing of water lines. That has been an ongoing problem with us that uh, we are working to, you know, uh, and we have made some great strides in that area. And the Waterworks has been very good in working with us, and so has uh, Alabama Department of Environmental Management. And Alabama Rural Water can't leave them out. We'll, do, we'll start with the next one. Ms. Mayor McCord will stay for the next question. 
It's about bingo. Um, as you know, this Hobson City's had a history with bingo. Uh, the I-20 location closed earlier this year, but Calhoun County is now moving hard into the bingo business. Some of the cities in town are actively looking to get into the bingo business. Would you see this as another long-term opportunity for Hobson City, or is bingo kind of something in the city's past? Uh, I don't think it's anything that's in the city past. Uh, that conversation keeps coming up. I think right now one of the problems that we have is uh, having a large enough place to, drop, to attract the larger crowds, especially since they have raised uh, the states. And so um, we don't have a place, but certainly there's land available where the old I-20 bingo used to be. And Hopton City is kind of like the baby of the bingo. <laughs> and so uh, we're hoping that it will, something will come of that and we will be able to tap into that again. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jackson, same question about bingo possibilities in Hobson City. Well, I consider uh, bingo as being one of our largest uh, revenues in the city. And do I believe that, um, that it will end? No. I believe that in the future it will come back and it is one of our resources. We'll start with you with the next question, Ms. Jackson. Uh, this comes from our audience, um, and this person wants to know, what, if you're elected, what would be your plan to help the youth of Hobson City with their recreation and their free time? Their free times, I would um, seek for programs. We once had a program that where um, there were a work program that I would like to consider to bring back to our youth as well. Um, I would like to see other activities in the recreation department, the Little League, football, basketball. Thank you. Mayor, same question. What would be, if you're reelected, what would be your plans for the next four years for the youth in the recreation in the city? Uh, we are working now to, uh, we have to do some repairs on our gym. Uh, we want to get our basketball team started back and also our football team. But more importantly, we've got to get some parents involved in those sports programs. Uh, we will have uh, an after school feeding program that we've not had in the past and we're tying that in to uh, our read riding program, which is a bicycle club that kids earn points to ride bicycles uh, that the city owns, uh, but they have to read and participate in other activities in the city. So well, we're working on some, some of those activities, but we want the parents to get involved because the recreation director, uh, the chairperson of recreation, uh, ends up having to spend a lot of money out of her pocket to feed kids when they come to practice and they haven't eaten or when they're going on trips and you know parents can't afford to help them do what they do. So uh, we are working on trying to see how we can mitigate that. Okay, you'll stay up there. Uh, next question is, we have, a lot of the questions tonight are specific about certain topics, certain departments in the city, but this one is simply, if you were reelected, what would be the number one issue you would like to tackle at the beginning of the next term? That number one issue, I would say we have some infrastructure problems that we need to work on. But one of the things that, you know, we have to look at, uh, we have to consider poverty whenever we approach it, anything that we are doing in Thompson City and the poverty level here in the city. One of the things that I want to do is to reach out to the ex-offenders in this community because we do have quite a few young men who have had uh, problems with the law who come back into the community and they can't get jobs. And so we want to work on helping our people get jobs and get the training that they need to get better jobs. Ms. Jackson, same question. If you are elected, what would be your number one issue you would like to tackle first thing? Number one, I would like to see safety into the community where we would at least have a security guard or a police patrol, at least uh, at least at night, we can't get it during the day. And as single working moms in our community, in poverty is a problem. A lot of, the, a lot of our single moms cannot afford daycare. 
because it's very, very expensive. And if a, program, if a program year can be created to where it can give them some release, I will work very hard toward that as far as our youth. And not only our youth, but with God's help, our elderly. Even though they have a senior citizen facility, they have transportation to get there, but there should be other things that we should be able to offer them as well. And those are some of my goals. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, we'll let you start with the next question. Uh, this comes from the audience. Um, it's talking about the police, the need for police in the city. Uh, crime is an issue in every town in Calhoun County. Certainly, uh, Hobson City is not the only one. Uh, what would be your opinion about crime in the city and the need for police in the city if there was money to fund that? First of all, again, safety. And we have had some crimes, but there hasn't been many, and majority of our crime does not come from our community. It comes from, it comes from us outside. And just a matter of fact, the other day, I would suggest that we had cameras put up, you know, to help patrol our city. I was at the red light, and there was this young man, couldn't wait, he just came around me, he had a beer in his hand, but there was no one to monitor that. And then we got down to the store, he put, it, he put the beer out and waved at me. But as a, as a concerned citizen, did I stop? No. I alert the county who is over in Hospital City. That was something to be addressed. We have children. That is a great concern. Nor do we ever hardly see our children outside playing. And that is a problem. Thank you. Mayor Corey, same question. Excellent question, and we're already on the money on that. We have already ordered cameras for the town of Hobson City. Uh, one of the delays in getting those cameras installed is the fact that you cannot install them on the electrical poles that are existing. Alabama Power doesn't allow anybody to put other electrical things on those poles. So we have to go back to the table. We have some cameras at City Hall and in the back in the FEMA building. Uh, we have some cameras in the park area and cameras at the library. So we are on the money on that. But let me say this about monies that used to be available for policing that came through the COPS program, through a Department of Justice program. Those funds are no longer available. You have to have an existing police department. There are no funds to start up a police department. So we are always in dialogue with the Calvin County Sheriff Department about how we can increase the services that we get from them. And they are already strapped, and that is a problem for us. So we're trying to get the cameras, and that will help a whole lot. Thank you. Mr. Stamper, we'll let you do the next one. Hobson City, obviously, has had a long connection to the city of Oxford, historically. That being said, are there ways that Hobson City can take advantage of some of the things going on in Oxford and Anniston to partner with, such as the Coldwater Mountain Bike Trail, the Chief Ladiga Trail, any of the, of the programs going on in, in the neighboring cities around Hobson City? Uh, uh, bike Trail Man is sitting right there in the green, Mr. Green. And uh, we have been working on that for, for about three or four years. Uh, they're in close contact with uh, the bike trail uh, people, and so we do plan on tapping in. We have two access points from our end. Uh, and I've been told I need to put out a newsletter so people can know everything that's going on. I don't have time to do a newsletter, but if I'm elected again, I will make sure you get a newsletter. Read the Anderson story, keep up with what's going on because. Uh, We've been down to Fairhope and all those other meetings to gather information about the bike trail. And he's been in contact with the national piece that comes to Anniston. Uh, I don't know those names, he knows them. But we're working on that as you speak. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, the same question, please. Yes, I am aware that Austin City has, has been working with um, getting a bike trail for the community. And just like the mayor just said, she's gave that uh, point as to why it hasn't taken place. And even in partnership with 
was uh, offered, there's a lot that we could partnership with them, I believe. That we could also partner with them. They have um, they have no leagues and they have plenty of them. And that would be great for our children in the community to be a part of those leagues. That would also give them uh, opportunity to not just be sitting around in, in the street with nothing to do, being bored, because there is too much in Alford, like I said, it's promising to our children in the community. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, we'll start with you with the next one. Let's go back to the issue of police again. And it's, it's a simple question. Long term, is it realistic for Hobson City to continue to operate without a, fully, a full police department of its own? I believe so, because we need something structured. And I do believe um, once, I'm not gonna say the camera's not gonna be um, put into place, but I'm saying once they put into place, that will also bring revenues into, into our city. That can be put into the general fund, I believe, and uh, we can save. And therefore, we can find a matching grant that will allow us to put our structure, our facility back into the city. Okay, thank you. Mayor, same question. I just answered that question. Department of Justice does not have those funds. Right. I've already spoken with them. We speak to them every year. And every time something comes out, and when the Department of Justice COP grant comes out every year, one of the things that is tied into the COPS grant is that you have to have an existing police department. And when you're talking about grants, I have an opportunity to go to the University of, uh, of Alabama to learn about writing grants. You have to hire a grant writer, somebody who's going to write your grants for you, that knows what they're doing. Uh, with our um, Department of Justice and with the County Sheriff Department, if they get somebody uh, and hire them through the County Sheriff Department, in those three years when that grant is up, we have to be able to hire them. Policing does not bring money to your community. Policing takes money out of your community because you got to pay salaries, you got to pay insurance and all of that other stuff and buy cars because they won't be riding the bicycles. Mayor, we'll start with you in the next one. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. This question comes from our audience. Um, and this person asks, if you are reelected, how would you go about building infrastructure within the city? Not just the water system, but all of the infrastructure within the city. We have been uh, communicating for some months now with a consulting uh, firm out of Florida, Image Point, Ms. Doreen Stevens. She has been here to visit with Hobson City, look at some of the things that she can possibly do for the town of Hobson City. And so, uh, the plan is to have her to come back in and to work with the mayor and the council and the community and look at some things. And one of the things we want to work on is a housing rehab program. We have a housing rehab program that will start this month, but they'll only be able to repair 16 houses. And we have other homes that are in dire need of repairs. So uh, that, along with looking for businesses that may want to come into a depressed area such as Hobson City, we own the old print shop where it housed the first uh, industry in Hobson City. It's in need of repair, and we will be looking to have someone to come in to occupy that. That will bring some revenue into Hobson City. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, same question, please. I truly believe if we had an open mind and an open door policy, with the community, and allow the community to come in and start our own businesses. And once it began, I do believe that there will be other um, companies, jobs, who want to come in. But at first, I would say that we would have to help our, our own self first by allowing, allowing our own community to open up businesses. I don't think it's just about letting other businesses come in. When you have 
concerned citizen in the community that wants to open up businesses. And once they start progress to be seen, I do believe other, other uh, companies will come in, like I said. So let's allow our community. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, you'll stay there. <laughs> We got the next question, and it's a it, this is this question is a follow up in some ways to the one we just asked about business and recruiting new industries in there. If a recruit, if an in, industrial recruiter or a business owner came to you, if you were mayor, and asked about opening a store, a business of some sort, what would you tell them about the positives? How, how would you help recruit them to the city? First of all. I would allow them to know the truth. I would ask them how they observe the town and do they know uh, the policies here uh, as far as if there wasn't a, a police department established. I would want them to know all that. And I also want them to know the flood area because we do have a flood zone. And if they wanted to come in under those circumstances, I would say yes to them because that would be bringing revenue to the, into, the, into the town plus economical development. And that is what we need in this town to grow. Thank you. Mayor McCord, same question, please. We've talked to some potential uh, people who may be interested in Hobson City, and they're very well aware of what we're up against here in this community. Uh, one of the things that uh, we can look at doing is doing what Anderson and some of the other cities do in terms of some of the taxes and things like that that they may uh, we may be able to give them a break on so that they are able to come into our city and uh, establish a business and be successful with it. Okay. We'll start with you, Mayor, on this next question. And you obviously, because you're the mayor, you understand and are very aware of all the, the historical aspects of the city and the efforts that City Hall has done recently to join different groups to help boost tourism and historical remembrance here in Hobson City. Are there things that the city can do beyond that to help remember the history of this town and particularly maybe use it to bring in tourism and maybe a little bit of uh, revenue down the road? Uh, I think absolutely so. I think one of the most important things is that we begin, as we've been encouraged to do, to tell our stories and share our stories with other people. And the information that we have and that we've compiled, uh, we uh, have some young ladies in this community who've been working with some students from the University of Alabama uh, in a vo photo voice project that they're doing, but they're also going to be doing some interviews. And we have established a room at City Hall called the Historical Room where we've gotten uh, historical artifacts from people in the community that we have in that room that we want people to come and see. We have a bus tour that comes here every year from Sonoma Community College in California with uh, congressmen and senators and college professors and so forth on that bus. And they stop here in Hobson City. The historical corridor that we talked about, we just submitted a grant to National Endowments of the Arts for that. And uh, so we're looking at being able to draw, get that information out about Hobson City, get the community involved and help. Okay, thank you. Ms. Jackson, if you could take the same question, please. I feel again that Hobson City community need to be involved 100%. And I feel that if uh, a souvenir shop was here, for the historical town of Hobson City. You got souvenir cards, you uh, have uh, cups, the plates, whatever comes with souvenir. And address Hobson City. It could be known that way. When you have visitors coming to town, they could visit the souvenir shop. And then they would have memories of Hobson City taken with them into their homes. So I basically um, say of a, a, a that ideal, just to say, that, that is one that can bring us revenues and taxes into the community. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, we'll start with you. Uh, several years ago, actually more than several years ago, the city of Blue Mountain here in Calhoun County, it dissolved. It was very similar to Hobson City in the fact 
that it's, it's one big revenue source went away. It had trouble paying, paying the bills and eventually dissolved its charter um, and stopped being a city. Obviously, that's something that, the, that most people in Hobson City probably would not want to ever do. But could you foresee a day to where that would be a possibility for Hobson City, or is that something that just would not be on the radar at all? No, I see that being a chance in, in Hobson City, as the community of Hobson City, working together with a positive um, communication. Sometimes communication with the community is a problem. So allowing the community to come in and to be involved in, in knowing majority of everything that's going in the city, not only everything, I mean, some things, but I think all things that concern the city, because we all would be uh, elected as an overseer, like an executive over the town, and they have a right to know if they vote us in. Okay, thank you. Mayor, the same question, please. We're a city that was born out of adversity. And we have survived for 117 years because of our faith. I don't see Hobson City going anywhere. That's why I work as hard as I do to make sure that Hobson City be around another 117 years. And I believe the people in Hobson City uh, who come out to help, who come to events when we have them, who come out to our worship service, and, come to everything that we do in this city, be a part of this city. Now the ideal city would be for everybody to get involved and come and participate. That hasn't happened yet. But there are enough of good people, of good will in Hobson City to keep Hobson City going. And a whole lot of black towns have dissolved. That's why we have the Historical Black Towns and Settlements Alliance. We have uh, a partnership with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill who's helping to tell our story, and I don't believe that Hobson City will go anywhere anytime soon. Thank you. Okay, that ends the question port, uh, portion of our forum tonight. We'll go to um, final statements at this point. Um, try to keep this to about 30 minutes tonight. Um, each candidate will get one minute for their final statement, and Mayor, we'll let you uh, start off, please. <laughs> one of the things that we plan to do in our historical room is to have cups, plates, sauces, and all that other good stuff. But everything we talk about tonight, it starts with money. And that's the one thing that we don't have. Uh, we have a lot of good people in Hobson City who want to help make Hobson City better. And uh, since I've been campaigning this time, they've told me some things that I need to do, and some of them didn't kind of rub me just right. But if we're going to get to where we want to go, uh, then we have to do those things that makes it so that we can all work together and do what we want to do and what we need to do for the town of Hobson City. Keep that history going. Uh, we had about 75 PhDs and people who've written books uh, to write us not only letters of support, but who are helping us with our historical corridor. That's going to be a big piece for this community, for this state, and for this nation. Thank you very much. Ms. Jackson? Again, I say, if there is no money in the city, let's allow our community that wants to form businesses and bring them in here, and let it work. It will bring um, revenues into the town, taxes, and there will be some money. You know, maybe, you know, it has been said that, you know, they could, they would help. Help is fine. But having your own business is another. But to have your own business, it will help, again, the community with taxes and revenues. Let's not deter them away from having their own business. Let's allow them to come in with open arms. Maybe people, maybe other businesses out there that is not a part of Hobson City don't want to come in, but let Hobson City come in. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that ends us right on time. It's 6 o'clock. We appreciate it. Uh, thank our candidates and everybody coming tonight. 
and would like to remind you that if you have interest in the Oxford elections, um, there is a forum Thursday at 5.30 at the Performing Arts Center. Thank you very much.